go over step by step how to create a literature review database. Notice down below here that there is a summary tab which allows you to summarize an article in one row and then a detailed review which provides details of the results of each article categorized by theme and subtheme. So let's start with the summary and I'm going to go over each of the categories here or the columns. We have authors, so you can cite one author, K, 2009, two authors, K and Kanak, 2007, or multiple author authors, and what I mean by that is more than two authors, and you put K et al, period, 2009. Next, you fill in the population. And by population, I mean the educational level of the population. Elementary, middle school, secondary, undergraduate, graduate, pre-service teachers, or you could be fo focusing on professionals, management, or faculty. Next, you want to look at the sample size. So you simply type that in. If the sample size isn't there, of course, you would just leave it blank. Sample description, you'd want to take a look at the sample description and in your estimation, decide whether it is incomplete, whether there's missing information like number of males and females, socioeconomic status. There could be all sorts of missing information, but you're looking for information that you think might be relevant to the study, but hasn't been included. Is there a partial description? So perhaps they describe some details, they provide gender, but not SES, or other key factors that might be important, or whether it's a relatively complete sample description. So you give it a zero, a one, or a two. Then you have to, if it's a quantitative study and uses scales, determine whether the scales are reliable or valid. Now the quick way to do that without knowing a lot of statistics, is to press Control F when you're in the article and look for the word Reliab. That will grab reliable, reliability, and see if it's in there in the method section. Let's do the same thing for valid. Search for that, Control F, and see if it's in there. If it isn't, chances are the study hasn't looked at reliability and validity. If you have any doubt, though, just put a question mark there that you're not sure. And, of course, you can come back to it when you know more and you can assess it in more detail. Don't spend a lot of time trying to figure that out. Now, what if it's a qualitative study? You have to give it some sort of a, an assessment, whether it's a limited, whether there's a limited number of checks and balances, whether there's some checks or multiple checks. And so what do I mean by that? So... What you might look at is whether there's a transparency of analysis, whether the authors tell you how they analyze the data. Well, you get a good sense of what they did, not a quick description, but a detailed description, and maybe even a coding scheme. You might look at the credibility of the data. Were the, was there more than one person that analyzed the data? Did the authors present negative cases as well as positive cases in terms of the results? Was there triangulation of the results? Were, was more than one data source used? Observations, interviews, focus groups? Was there a participant check of the data? Was the data shown to the participant and said, this is what I think you said, is it what you said? And was there a rich description? provided. You don't have to have them all, but those are the kinds of things you look for in a qualitative study. So based on those, you can you can take a look and say, well, if was there anything there? Was there some limited description of how the data was analyzed? Was there some description and you could see that the results were rich and there were some checks and balances? Or were there multiple checks where you could see triangulation, where the data was transparent, where there was someone else checking the data? So you make some sort of estimation of that if it's a qualitative study. You want to put in the subject area. That's important. Maybe perhaps there are multiple subject areas. You want to put in the type of data collected. Was there qualitative collect data collected? Um, 
with the, was it observational data, survey data, performance data? There may be another category I've missed. Next, you want to take a look at the results. And typically with results, we look at behaviors, attitudes, and learning. This is just a summary. It's a quick summary. So we look at behaviors and we determine whether were there negative behaviors determined, no difference, or mixed, positive and negative, that would also be scored zero, and or whether it's just positive results, and you score that a one. And you do the same thing if you're measuring attitudes or learning. All right, and then finally, you clearly describe what the purpose of the paper was. So this study looked at the impact of learning objects on secondary math students' attitudes and learning performance. All right, so we know what we're looking at, attitudes and learning performance. And I might even put in more detail in terms of the attitudes I looked at. I could, might have put in brackets, ease of use, engagement, that kind of thing to be specific. You don't want to write a treatise here, but you want to have a good summary of the paper. This would suffice. So that's the summary section of how you would summarize an article. You try to keep it clean, use numbers, minimal words, and use the categories provided. Now the detailed review looks at the results and only the results of the paper. You're not looking at the literature review and putting in information here and you could put in the method, but typically we just look at the results. What did K2009 find out about, in this case, web-based learning tools? All right, so let's look at the level of detail of the result that you should provide. Now, you don't have to put, have to put color coding in here. I just did to emphasize what you need to put in. You have to put in who. That's in blue. Secondary school math students, we know. That's pretty clear. And then the what? Well, we're looking at attitudes here. Based on what? So what kind of data? Based on survey data. It wasn't observational data. It wasn't interview data. It was were positive with respect to what? Ease of use. So it's attitudes and ease of use um, of web-based learning tools. So I put ease of use here. That would be the sub-theme, and the theme is attitude. Okay? Second example. Well, we still have secondary school math students based on survey data. This is engagement now. So the only thing that's changed is the sub-theme. Same result, they're positive. And in this case, it's learning. So it's attitudes about learning. Okay? So those are attitude, attitude, attitude. And then... I'm looking at performance, and here it's secondary, and that should say school, because we want to be specific, secondary school student scores based on performance measures, all right, increased significantly. So we know this is a statistic test. When, when we look at the word significantly, we're going to see a p-value, and we're going to see something, the word significantly different in the actual results. And then I actually put in and it, in this study reported the difference, 35% between pre and post test scores when web-based learning tools were used. That's the level of detail that you need to put in for each result so that each result stands on its own and we can look at that later on and understand it. If you're too brief, when you look at this, perhaps a month or two months later, it will be difficult to understand the result and then you'll have to go back to the paper again and reread those sections. So you don't want to do that. So this is the detailed review section part of a literature review. In summary, you fill in the one-line summary of an article, and then you fill in the results based on the article with one result reported per row. So you're obviously going to have multiple results in a paper if the paper has multiple data to report.